Hello, I'm Lewis from DIY Machines and today I'm going to show you how, if you have access to your own DSLR, how you can build your own photo booth for a lot less money than the hiring one. This one was built to resemble the old Instagram logo. I recently took it along to a wedding with a box of props. It captured plenty of great photos and everyone enjoyed using it. Its photo shoot sequence is started by pressing the giant illuminated arcade button. Who doesn't like pressing one of those? Once pressed, the button's light goes out and a countdown starts on the LED display. This repeats three times, guiding the party goers through the automated photo shoot. After each photo, the image is shown on the large screen. High quality copies of the photos are saved onto the camera's SD card for enjoyment after the party. You're going to need a few things if you'd like to build one of these for yourself. I've put links to where you can find these parts on Amazon in the description down below. You'll need an Arduino Nano, I quite like these Elegoo ones, a 2.2 kilo ohms and a 1000 ohm resistor, a giant illuminated arcade button, a Max 7219 display module, a shutter release cable for your SLR camera. It should work with other brands, but you may have to change some of the circuitry slightly. A small breadboard or a piece of perforated board. You'll also need a monitor. I'm using this Asus 23 inch VC293H. Some small lengths of hookup wire, four longer lengths of wire to connect to the arcade button, some filament for the 3D printed parts, and of course, you need to lay your hands on a digital SLR camera. All of the parts in this project have been designed to be printed without supports. I've printed the camera mount with a 0.3mm layer height, which took just under 7 hours. Use a higher infill percentage for this piece, as it will be supporting the weight of your camera and lens. For the housing, you'll need to cut 5 wooden panels. I'm using some 18mm MFC. The panel sizes are 580 by 620 millimeters. You want two of those. 200 by 420 millimeters. Two of those. And one 200 by 380 millimeters. Once cut, we need to make some additional holes in the front panels to accommodate the camera lens, screen, and LED matrix. I'm going to cut a lens hole with a diameter of 106 millimeters, with its center about 95 millimeters from the top and 240 millimeters in from the side. The next hole will be for the LED matrix. The rectangular cutout should be 145 by 48 millimeters and be located with its short edge 120 millimeters in from the side and the top edge about 70 millimeters in from the top. For the monitor I'm using, there's a link to it in the description below, I'm going to cut a 285 millimeter high and 430 millimeter wide square cutout centered widthways and 100 millimeters up from the bottom. Don't worry too much about the quality of the cuts as we will print some plastic surrounds to tidy up these openings. Finally, I'm going to add a 100 millimeter radius to each of the four corners on the two largest pieces of wood. Now use some wood screws to assemble everything together. These will need to be countersunk so we can fill them before we decorate it later. Repeat the same fixings again on the other side. This project was brought to you thanks to the generosity of my Patreon supporters. Thank you. Please consider supporting the work that I do on this channel by becoming a patron yourself. Now I'll use some filler to cover up the screw holes that we recessed earlier. Once you've sanded these down, we'll be ready to apply a coat of paint. I'm only going to paint the bottom two thirds of my model, so I'm using some tape to mask off the areas I want to leave. Now that the paint is dry on your photo booth, you can go ahead and print some plastic inserts. These will glue into place around these rough cut openings 
to help tidy up its appearance. This first part is the lens ring, no supports or brim are required. The same goes for the Max 7219 mounting plate. Next up the corners A and corner B.STL. You'll need to print two of each to get a set of four pieces. Once these are complete, you can glue them in place around the photo booth. Now that our photo booth is looking more presentable, I'm going to show you how to prepare the LED display, the camera shutter cable and the giant RK button for connection to the rest of our circuitry. When we get to that point, I'll show you both how to use a breadboard or a piece of perforated board to assemble the electronics. Prepare five 50 cm lengths of wire. Solder these to the five pins on the Max 7219. Remove the electronics from the arcade button by gently twisting it out and then solder a long length of wire to each contact. These two are for the LED and these are for the switch. I'm using about 3 to 4 meters for mine. As I'm using speaker wire, I'm attaching one red and one black wire to each component. Next, open up the camera shutter release housing. Inside, you should find three plates. Take a note of which wire is connected to which plate. Yellow to the top plate, white to the middle plate, and red to the bottom. We can then remove the wires and strip them ready for use. We're now at the stage with our electronics where we can start to assemble our components on top of our breadboard. If you're more interested in the perforated board, then you can skip past this section. Otherwise, grab your Arduino Nano and we'll start assembling. Position the Nano at the end of the breadboard so that its pins straddle the center divider. Use a short piece of wire to connect the ground connection to this outside rail. Connect the 1K resistor that goes brown, black, red between D12 and the inner rail. We can now connect the LED display to the breadboard so that the VCC is connected to 5 volts, ground to this outside ground rail, DIN to D11, CS to D10, and CLK to D13. One wire from the arcade button switch should be connected to D8 and the other end to ground. The positive wire from the button's LED should be connected to D9 and the negative wire again to ground. Place the 2.2 kilo ohms resistor between the inside rail and one of the spare rows at the end of the breadboard. At this point, it would be a good idea to use some hot mount glue to secure some of these cables in place and tidy them up. Connect the wire coming from your shutter cable's bottom plate, which is the shutter plate, to the inside rail, and the wire from the middle plate, or ground wire, to where you just connected the 2.2 kilo ohms resistor. And finally, Use another short length of wire to connect the ground rail to the same row as the 2.2 kilo ohms resistor and fix everything securely in place. Now I'll show you how to connect all of your components using a piece of perforated board. This is a more robust, compact and permanent solution. I'm going to step you through using a diagram now. If you'd like to download a high quality version of the diagram, you can using the links down below. First, solder the Arduino Nano to the board. I've pushed the pins on mine through so that pin D13 is in the top hole, third row inwards. Now connect the 1K resistor by soldering it to the hole adjacent to D12 and the hole three more along from that. To connect the resistor to the Arduino, you'll need to bridge the gap with some solder. Now connect the 2.2 kilo ohms resistor between the hole farthest away from D6 to one of the pins on the RST row. Solder the wire from the display's CLK connection to the hole adjacent to D13 and then bridge the solder gap. The VCC wire from the display is connected to 5 volts in the same fashion, as is DIN to D11 and CS to D10. 
the positive LED lead is connected to D9 and one of the wires from the button switched to D8. Use a short length of wire to connect the unconnected end of the 1K resistor to the hole in the center of the D6 row. Solder the wire which we cut from the top shutter plate on the camera lead to the gap between the two connections on the D6 row and then bridge them all together on the underside. Solder the wire which came from the middle ground plate to the fourth hole away from the Arduino's D4. Connect a short length of wire between the third hole away from D4 and bridge this to the ground plate wire. The other end of the short wire connects to the third hole away from the RST pin and this requires bridging to the resistor. The unconnected wire coming from the button switch is connected to the hole adjacent to ground and is bridged to it. The negative wire from the LED goes next to this pair and is also bridged across to the ground connection. The ground wire coming from the LED display is added onto this row and this time bridge its connection to both the ground row and the resistor and short wire connection just below it. Now we'll connect your Arduino Nano to your computer and then upload the program I've written for it. Again, you'll find a link to this program down in the description below. Connect the Arduino to your PC using a USB cable and open the program in the Arduino IDE. Select the board type of Arduino Nano and the processor of ATmega328P. Choose the serial connection for your board and then press upload. Now you can manually press the switch and test if your electronics are working as intended. If they are, you should see the light go out and then the LED display will count down from 10. After that, your camera will take a picture and then the same process will repeat two more times. Let's go ahead now and move all the electronics inside of our housing. We can tidy up the wires coming from the button's electronics by wrapping some pieces of tape along its length. You'll also need a small screw to attach your camera to the 3D printed mount. I'm going to borrow this one from my tripod. Once you've attached your camera loosely to the mount, slide it into place and then use a pen to mark where you need to fix this to the back of the photo booth. You can then remove the camera, flip over the photo booth, remove the back, and then you can screw this into place with ease. For the next part, you'll need to print screenfoot.stl. Place the monitor inside the housing, then you can use this to figure out where you need to fix the screen's foot. This will want to be screwed into place. And then to prevent the monitor from falling out backwards, you'll need to print two of the screen braces. These are simply screwed to the edge and then the latch is held in place with another screw. This allows you to easily remove the monitor later if you want to use it for something else. Whilst paying attention to which way you fix it in place, you can use some hot melt glue to secure your LED display and your circuit board. Whilst we have easy access, you should add your USB cable to the Arduino, display cable to the monitor, and power cable. At this point, you can reattach the back of the photo booth. Now we'll reassemble the giant arcade button. I've created a 3D printable mount for this button, which allows it to be fitted onto most tripods. The button is screwed into place on top, and then the electronics are reattached from below. This simply slides on top of the tripod and makes it very sturdy and easy to position. To help support my videos, the digital file is available to download for a small donation. There is a link down in the description to where you can purchase the file. If you do, thank you for supporting this channel. Before you place your camera inside the housing, 
Go into the settings and see if you can change the image review setting. It may be labelled something else, but basically this is how long it shows you the picture it's just taken on its rear display. I've set mine to hold, so it's going to continue showing the most recent photo until the next one has been taken. You can now lower this into place and attach its screw mount from underneath. Now you can connect your camera to your display, mine via a mini HDMI cable, and connect the shutter release cable to the side of your camera as well. Next, switch on your camera and we'll take it for a test drive. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed building your own photo booth. Now this is the first time in a video I've shown you how to assemble your electronics on both a perforated board or a breadboard. Please do let me know down in the comments if you prefer seeing both or you're happy with just one or the other. Don't forget to check out my other videos such as BB-8, an automated plant waterer or a 3D printable Simon Says game. Don't forget to subscribe or share this video with anyone else who may find it interesting. Otherwise, until next time, ciao for now.